Hello friends, this is P.S. Pastor here at the Global Harvest Church, Maryland. Thank you for joining us today. The word that you're about to hear is powerful enough to transform your life and to take you to the next level where you desire to be. I encourage you, open up your mind, get ready to see what God is about to do for you and make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of these life transforming messages. God bless you. I'll see you at the end of the sermon. I'm going to be teaching this morning on a subject that I believe the Holy Spirit put in my heart for such a time like this. It's our Holy Communion again this morning. We've been partaking of the Holy Communion in the last five days of the fast. Every day we take the Holy Communion. And today we're going to take Holy Communion again. And tomorrow the grand finale is going to be an anointing service. I don't want you to miss that service tomorrow. It's going to be an anointing service. And I'm going to be anointing people. It's going to be an Holy Ghost service. Praise God. Tomorrow will be beautiful. But today I want to teach on the subject of the Holy Communion. And I've titled it The Miracle Meal. The miracle meal. If you turn your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 12, I want to start my reading from there. Exodus chapter 12, I'm going to take my reading from verse 1. We have a lot of reading to do, guys. So we're going to move really quickly. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 1. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt. That is very instructive. I want you to underline it. While they were still in Egypt, meaning before they saw any miracle. Ah, while you are still at the beginning of 2024, God will wrought special miracles for you. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. He said, from now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Now, I have a feeling that for those guys, it wasn't their January. But the day God shows up marks the beginning of a new year. This month, the Lord said, will be the first month. God recalibrated their entire calendar. Because it was time of their visitation. So he said, announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose a lamb. Or a young goat for a sacrifice. One animal for each household. And if a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. I'll skip to verse 6 very quickly. Take special care of this chosen animal. Until the evening of the 14th day, of this first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter that animal or the young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and on the top of their door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. That same night, they must roast the meat over a fire and eat it along with bitter salad grains and bread made without yeast. Somebody say salad. Mm, that's a word for somebody. Praise God. For 2024, God recommended salad. Can I hear an amen to that? Whew, glory to God. A bitter salad. Don't, don't, don't make it bitter. <laughs> All right, let me jump to verse 11. So that was the instruction. If you skip to verse 11 for me, he said, These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed. Wear your sandals. Carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency. For this is the Lord's Passover. Somebody say Passover. Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and every firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. 
I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood, somebody say, but the blood. On your doorpost will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Mm. Verse 27, verse 27. And you will reply, it is the Passover sacrifice for the Lord. For he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. And though he struck the Egyptians, he speared our families. When Moses had finished speaking, all the people bowed down to the ground and they worshipped. So the people of Israel did just as the Lord had commanded through Moses and Aaron. As the Lord had commanded, they did. And at that night, at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt from the firstborn son of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn son of a prisoner in the dungeon. Even the firstborn of their livestock were killed. Pharaoh and all of his officials and all the people of Egypt woke up during the night and a loud wailing was heard throughout the land of Egypt and there was not a single house where someone had not died, except for the children of Israel. Now move on to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 for me very quickly, and I will begin to put it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I read from verse 23. 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23. This was Paul speaking. He said, For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood of the body and the blood of the Lord. Somebody say unworthy manner. What does it mean by unworthy manner? It tells us in the next line. It said, but let every man examine himself. Meaning, pay attention to what you are eating. Don't eat it carelessly. Be conscious of the fact that you are partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus. That is what it means by eating it in a good manner. Those who ate it without good manners were those who just ate it like ordinary meal. So the scripture here, Apostle Paul admonishing, he said, eat it with consciousness in your mind. So let every man examine himself and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats it and drinks it in an unworthy manner, eats and drink judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many were weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Now that sleep there is not regular sleep. Amen. It's everlasting sleep. <laughs> he said many were weak. Many were sick, and many fell asleep. Many, many died. Shall we pray? Father, we ask that the few minutes we have, breathe upon your word. Speak to our hearts, Jesus. Let us hear you clearly. Let life be transformed to us. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and let our hearts understand. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul said, when you eat it, pay attention to what you eat. Because those who eat it without paying attention in an unworthy manner, three things happen to them. Some were weak, some were sick, and some died. I can infer that those who eat it in a worthy manner, then three things will happen to them. They will be strong. They will 
be healed and they will live. Are you following me this morning? If those who ate it in an unworthy manner, if they were weak and they were sick and they died, it means those who eat it as we're going to partake of it this morning, we eat in it with the consciousness that we will be strong. It means when people are saying they are weak, you will be saying I am strong. We will be healed and we will be alive and not die in the name of Jesus. The first scripture that I read to our hearing was an instruction that God gave to the children of Israel. It was time for their Passover. God was going to deliver them from Egypt. God has eventually heard their prayers and their cries. And God was going to do great things for them. But God said, you need to do a ceremony. You need to partake of an activity first in order for him to do what it is that he wanted to do. And what was the activity? God gave them specific instruction about Passover. Two things that the Lord asked them to do during the Passover, which of course is a type and shadow of the communion that Jesus enacted in that 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we read. Apostle Paul said, that which I received of the Lord, I give unto you. And it is very interesting. This one is not part of my sermon, but I can as well give you. How did Apostle Paul know? He said, that which I receive of the Lord, the same I communicate to you. As Apostle Paul was a man that worked an unusual word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. In fact, if you look at the entire scripture, you see everything is about word of knowledge, word of wisdom. And I've taught spiritual gifts in this church before. I'm going to be teaching it again this year. How did Moses know how God created the heavens and the earth? Was he there? But Moses was the writer of Genesis. It was word of knowledge. He was able to pick the things that happened even before he was created. How did John the beloved write a revelation? Does he know what's going to happen? In fact, we have not even experienced what is going to happen. On the island of Patmos, how did John the beloved, how did he get to know? By word of wisdom. He's able to tell the things that are going to happen. So the word of the Lord is a combination of several gifts of the Spirit. And that's why that topic has, won, has been one of the most passionate and very dear topics to my heart. And I believe every Christian should understand because, again, we need to operate these gifts. But two things that the Lord asked them to do at the Passover. Number one, to eat the meat. And number two, to apply the blood. I'm going to dwell there a little bit. Apply the blood on your lintel. It means whoever does not apply the blood, they are open to the danger that will come to others. Are you following me this morning? Guys, make no mistakes. This year, people will die. This year, some people will suffer losses. There are a lot of projections. Some good, some bad. You can make a decision to live in either of two ways. Number one, to live by covenant. Or number two, to live carelessly. Without covenant consciousness. You know, I was talking to Pastor Ibuka and Pastor Bukola on our way to church. I would say that I was just, after, after reading the Bible, I, I, I was bored a little bit. They didn't know what to do. I don't read news all the time, but I just went to go read some news. And I saw an aircraft that the entire side blew up during the media. Did you guys see that? Did you see it in the news? 16,000. That was some scary thing, man. Hey, man. <laughs> 16,000 feet above sea level. The entire thing just came up. Whoop. Whew. I can't even imagine if I was a diet. <laughs> People would have been pleading the blood of only God knows how many gallons of the blood must have been pled. Amen. Mm. This was a aircraft that is just 10 weeks old. Brand new aircraft. Brand new. 10 weeks old. That aircraft, I understand, has only done 150 trips. Now, CNN wrote, I don't know if it is true or verified yet, but that the two people that were supposed to sit by that side, they missed their flights. Mm. 
16,000 feet. You know, every time we enter aircraft and they say, pay attention to the safety features, we don't even pay attention. So if the oxygen max drops, da 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 may it not drop. <laughs> I don't want to see it drop. I, sometimes I just be like, God forbid that. <laughs> We just, they just keep saying those things. We don't pay attention. We have two options this year, folks. You can live this year as ordinary as you've lived other years. Or you can live it by the covenant. God said to them, he said, plead the blood. Specific instruction. Put it on the lintel. Because when I come, I'm only going to see, look at the blood. If I were an Egyptian, the day I saw them pleading that blood, I said, bro, borrow me some blood. <laughs> Is it this thing that you people have put it? Just borrow me some. But again, I have a feeling the Egyptian will have thought, hey, maybe this blood is what you will bring harm. Because they were not part of the covenant. You can also imagine the children of Israel that refused to obey that instruction. They plead the blood. So the blood was for safety and for deliverance. But there was a second thing that God asked them to do, which was to eat the meat. Now, if you notice in that scripture, he didn't say that when I see you eat the meat, I will pass over. It was the blood. Are you following me? It means if they didn't eat the meat but pled the blood, they would still have been delivered. Do we agree on that? The blood was the deliverance. So, pastor, what was the purpose of the meat? I will tell you. The purpose of the meat was for sustenance. They were going to go on a long journey into the wilderness. The purpose of that meat was different from the purpose of the blood. The one for the meat was to sustain them as they go through. Oh, pastor, how did you know? Let me show it to you. Look at Psalm 105, verse 37. Psalm 105, verse 37. The Bible says, He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among their tribes. As we go through the journey of 2024, Many will be sick, many will be weak, and many are going to be lost. But the purpose of eating the body of Jesus, which is signified here by this meat, was for sustenance, was to keep them. So while the blood was for external safety, the meat was for internal sustenance. It was a miracle meal. The communion or the Passover meal that they ate was not a regular meal. It had some spiritual connotations to it. Just as the table of the Lord that we are partaking of to today has some spiritual connotation to it. It was a special meal. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. Let me build this up a little bit. 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 8. I'm going to see... The story of a man of God here. A man of God. This man of God was tired. He said he wanted to die. That God should kill him. But look at what God did to him. From verse 5. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked. And there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is far. Ah, journey is far, sir. Amen. <laughs> you had better get up and eat again. But what was the significance of that eating? Couldn't he have just eaten whenever he's hungry? This was an angelic meal. It was a miracle meal. 
just like we are going to partake of this miracle meal today. Look at what the angel said to him about this meal. He said, because the journey is so great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Oreb, the mountain of God. So there is a meal that sustained people through their journey. It was an ordinary meal. What was the purpose of this Passover or this meal? I'll give you like three or four and then I'll wrap this up. Number one, the meal sustains you for the journey. It's for sustenance. Listen to me, guys. Because of this communion that you are partaking today, what touches others will not touch you. That amen is not good enough. I said what affects others negatively will not affect you. The communion or the angelic food was for sustenance for the journey. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 5. If you please put it on the screen for me. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 5. The Bible says, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes were not worn out on you. And your sandals have not worn out. Are you kidding me? 40 years? Say you didn't even have to change your garments. So it wasn't an ordinary meal. They were sustained by the supernatural power of God. There will be people that will live this year in their own power. They will say, well, I got it all together. I have strategized. I have my goals written. I have connections, you know. I don't want to be a self-made man this year. I want God to step up for me. Your clothes were not worn out for 40 years. Neither was their feet. The sandals worn out on their feet. If you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 4, it says something else there that was interesting to me. Still talking about their garments, but it said even their feet was not swollen. <laughs> There's a song we used to sing. Permit me if you don't understand this song in Yoruba dialect. Now, those of you, we were just speaking in tongues. Don't mind us. But what we're trying to say is that what the mighty could not do, a child of God did with ease. I said before you today to choose, would you go to 2024 in your own strength or you want to go in the strength of God? It was a miracle meal. Say that meal sustained their clothes. It wasn't a function of the material of the clothes, it was a function of who wore it. Because they were the one wearing the clothes, the power of the meal was strong enough to keep their clothes from warning out. This year, your account will not be dry. Ah, if somebody even mistakenly quotes your social security number, because the number belongs to you, it will answer with favor. It's not the number. It's not the amount. It's not your job. You know, I tell people, we are not sustained by what we earn. We live by what we sow. I've seen people earn more money and live miserable. And I've seen people earn not as much, but sustained and living more prosperous. For when many are saying there's a casting down, we will say there's a lifting up. It is not magic. It's the sustaining power of the Holy Ghost. It was a miracle meal. It was a miracle meal. Your clothes did not worn out. Your clothes did not worn out. It seemed like that business, there will be no more customers. But one way or the other, you just found out that the system business is still standing. 
they threaten, you will go, they will fire you, you will sack you, they said it, they said it, they said it. But one way or the other, your job is still sustained. Ah, how will I pay this bill? You know, I, I was talking to somebody who said, Pastor, how I paid my way through school, I can't even understand. It was what was inside. You will not see the rain, you will not see the wind, but the valley is still filled. The clothes were not worn out, nor their feet swollen. In 2024, you will not go in your own strength. Everywhere you look at, you will see the glory of God. Number two, this miracle meal guarantees miraculous supplies. Miraculous supplies. Psalm 105 verse 37 he said he brought them out with silver and with gold. And there was none feeble among their tribes. He brought them out with silver and with gold. He brought them out with silver and with gold. All the silver and all the gold belongs to the Lord. There is such a thing called supernatural wealth transfer. Where God just orchestrates it. In a way that when they are looking for the person that will do the work, they call you. You know, it is interesting that the only instrument that David could play was the instrument that was needed to chase the demon. They, they, they could have needed an instrument that David could not use. But what he had is what was needed. Because everyone can look at what you have and create a need that what you have is the only thing that can solve the problem. Abundant supply, miraculous supply. Number three, the miracle meal provides supernatural strength and healing. When you take of this communion today, you are going into the year. When you feel symptoms on your body, you say, you know, it's not me. For what is inside, he that is inside is greater than he that is in the world. My little children, ye are of God and you have overcome them. For greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in the world. Number four, the miracle meal breaks every yoke of bondage and stagnation. These guys had been in Egypt under bondage for many years. God said to them, he said, when you are partaking of the meal, be ready. You need to eat it in a haste because speed is coming to your feet. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. You have walked around the mountain long enough. You have stayed on the same spot in the last three and a half years. Three and a half years. You know yourself. Three and a half years. It seemed like you've been on the same spot. The Lord asked me to tell you that this year you will see speed. Amen. Pastor Ibukun taught us during the week that what happened to the children of Israel it wasn't a battle of man versus man. It was a battle of God versus God. Pharaoh had become a God that they worshipped. When Moses appeared before Pharaoh and said, you must let my people go. It was God and Moses, a man. Pharaoh was a God. A man was now talking to God. Pharaoh said, Oga, <laughs> did you put something on your, in your mouth? Did you lick something? Moses left the presence of Pharaoh rejected, disturbed, perplexed, frustrated. Every time you try to walk in your own flesh, it leads to frustration. Every time something is not working, it's not time to put more work. It's time to go and seek the face of God and say, what is wrong with working? Because whatever the Lord has blessed is blessed. Pastor Bungu taught us that it was after God said to Moses that I have now made you a God unto Pharaoh. 
and he said, a God cannot be speaking. A God must have a spokesman. So God appointed Aaron. So the Moses that went first to talk to Pharaoh is not the same Moses that went. Because this time, Moses appeared before Pharaoh, but he said, I cannot be talking to you. My spokesman, Aaron, should be talking to you. Because he was now a God. He's now a God. I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh. I have made thee a God in Maryland. I have made thee a God in the United States. The yoke was broken over the children of Israel that after 430 years, ah, God said to them, he said, wear your sandals as you are eating. Now, I thought when you are eating, you relax. God said, no, wear your sandals, garden your loins, for you must eat it in a hurry. Because God is eager, he's, he's very eager <laughs> to deliver them. This year, whatever has held you bound, whatever has not worked up until now, we declare they are terminated right now. Somebody has had sickness in their body. Tonight, today, I decree that sickness. Today is the expiry date. In the name of Jesus. We have a lady in the former church that we pastored. They trusted God. But your husband prayed, prayed, prayed. Felt like nothing was happening. When it was time, God imported the guy from America. About you, you are in America. God can import him from anywhere. Ah, he said it caused the east wind to blow. And the guy said, I don't even know why I'm there. But one way or the other, just going to jam the person. They were married in six months. It's a good thing that in Global Harvest Church, the requirement is for six months courtship. Amen. See, in fact, in 2023, I can reduce it to three months for you. <laughs> hey, 20, did I say 2023? Okay, 2023. Well, 2024, I'll keep it at six months. <laughs> Who said great things cannot happen in one year? They were delivered. See, when God judged Israel, when God judged Egypt, the Bible says Moses, Pharaoh, and all of his officials, they made haste. They were in a they said to them, hurriedly, move out, move out, move out. We don't want you here anymore. They say, Oh, God, let's pack our bag. Pack it quickly, pack it quickly. Because of the miracle meal. This year, whatever has kept you. Is letting you go today. Let me give you the last one. The plague and death could not come near them. The plague and death could not come near them. He said, This plague will not touch you. I don't care what happens in 2024, we will bury nobody. For he that sits in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He has given his angels charge over me. Thy a thousand may fall by the side and ten thousand by right hand. When evil is ahead of you, in 2024 you will not catch up with it. When evil is coming from behind, it will not catch up with you. If they like, let them buy all the guns. And let them not put any gun restriction. It doesn't matter. But he that digget a, 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 a pit himself shall fall into it. Your children, your family members, no one connected to you will suffer gun violence. The day that planes will drop, you will not fly. If you have to fly the everlasting hand, that sustains the heavens and the earth, that everlasting hand will sustain you. Amen. When you travel on the road, you travel on water, you travel in the air, this year you will suffer no loss. Amen. Death cannot touch them. Death looked at them and said, you are not one of them that can touch. Cannot touch you. 
because there was a mark. Apostle Paul says, henceforth, let no man trouble us. For we bear in our body the mark of the Lord. It means there are people that there's a mark on them. Cain said, God, this problem is too much. Whoever sees me is going to kill me. God said, I will put a mark that nobody will be able to touch you. There are marks. I said, there are marks. The problem is you are too afraid. You don't even know what you carry. Job is what a lot of people use. I said, ah, what about Job? Job was a righteous man. But Job had his own problem. <laughs> In fact, when God was talking to Satan about Job, God said, have you considered my servant Job? What Satan said to him? Satan said, have you not mount a hedge of fire around them? But Job did not know. Because Job kept thinking, he said, well, the things that I feared, greatly feared, are now come upon me. In his every day, Job was just playing all kinds of scenarios. And he said, okay, maybe today his children will fall sick. Maybe today his children will die. Maybe today as they are eating, the house will just collapse. The guy was imagining all kinds of things. He did not know that there was a hedge of fire around him. I decree in 2024, everyone connected to you. Ah, liha fabaro kechisha. Not only a person, everything that has your name on it, living or not living, none is permitted to be lost. Nothing is permitted to die in your hands. Your business will not die. Your ideas will not die. In the name of Jesus. He said when there is plague all over the land. And he sees he said no. We cannot touch this one. He said we cannot touch this one. That's the mark upon them. How do we ensure and work in this? I'll give you two things that you must do to play your part. In order for God to play his part. It is an irresponsible child that wants everything done without asking, what is my own part? Responsible children take responsibility. What is my responsibility as we journey through this year and partaking of this communion? Number one, let God know that he's the Lord over your life in 2024. Surrender completely to him. Every day tell him, God, you are my God. You are my Lord. Without you, I am nothing. Number two, make a commitment to serve the Lord. Ah, let 2024 be the year that you serve Him. That you serve Him. That you serve Him. Serve Him with every breath in your nostrils. Don't be a bystander this year. Get committed and serve. Psalm 84 verse 10. The psalmist says there, he said, a day in the house of the Lord is better than a thousand days outside of his courts. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the courts of the Lord. I would rather be a gatekeeper than live a good life in the homes of the wicked. Serve this year. Make a commitment to serve. A man of God once said that those who go to the extreme with God get extremely blessed by God. He said, how will I know that I'm serving and that I'm serving enough to qualify for the blessings of heaven? He said, only when people look at you and say your own is too much. <laughs> Oof. It's as though an alarm rang in my head. This was many years ago. He said, until people look at you and say, Oh, the man can you. Now, forgive me if you do not understand what I do. I spoke in tongues. Amen. Until people look at you and say, Your own is too much. You have not started serving. Serving is not, well, when I'm around, you know, I'm around. But when I'm not around, you know, <laughs> that's not service 
We serve in and out of season when it is convenient and when it's not convenient. We serve even when you served your country. You say, under the sun and in the rain. You never love someone only when it is good. The true test of love is when it costs you something. If you ever love me only when I am doing good, then it is fake. True love is tested when I'm not good, but you are still there for me. When everything is rosy and you are serving, it's, it's not so genuine. It is when it does not look right. Say, yeah! Though it slay me, yet will I praise him. As long as there is breath in my nostrils. Did you know what he said? He said, let, let everything has breath. He didn't say everything that has enough money. The requirement for service and for praising and for loving him is breath. Now, if you notice that he said everything that has breath, do you know why birds wake up in the morning and sing? It's because they have breath. It doesn't only apply to man. Lions roar. You think they are just doing shakara, but they are praising their maker. Even the leaves and the trees, they move from side to side, bowing down before their maker. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. You say, oh, I'm feeling good. So you're going to see me to church. Oh, why didn't you come to church today? Why didn't you serve? I, I, I wasn't feeling good. The more reason why you should be in church. That you weren't feeling good is the more reason why you should be there. Number three, as I finally wrap this up, there is no love without giving. We give and give and give. And we find out that the more we give, the more he blesses us. See, if you can sustain yourself, then do financial calculation and keep your budget strictly by yourself. But if you know my budget versus my income does not match. There must be a, so a seed in the ground. When you become desperate, you give like a crazy man. You see, we, 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 are, we, we keep giving. We keep giving. There's a grace for giving. There are some of us carry that grace for giving. But do you know how I contacted one of those graces? One day we were in church. This man will remember me. Or know the person I'm talking about. We were in church and a woman was looking for her child. And said, where is my son now? I mean, is Baba? I sold him again in church because there's nothing the man cannot sow. So what? What a testimony from a wife. One day the guy sowed a seed. I said, Jesus, and I know, I know his income. And I know the seat. Then I was the administrator of the church. So I was privy to some of those information. When I saw the seat, I said, there's no way that this guy will not go foul. It challenged me. Not only did it challenge me, it provoked me. Oh, the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob, you're my God. 
Abraham gave the only son he had. The one that was with the promise. You see, if I was Abraham, I said, God, you want a sacrifice. I give you Ishmael. <laughs> Let me give you Ishmael. After all, it is you yourself that said, Isaac is the, <laughs> is the real child. Do you know that is what we do all the time? We give God not the best, but we give him the reserve. Solomon gave to God one day in 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon slaughtered 1,000 animals. God appeared the same day. The same day. Like God was provoked. God appeared to Solomon and said, what do you want? Now, when God gives you a blank check, you have touched his heart. 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 I was 19 years old when I heard a man of God that I honor and respect very much said one day he gave a seed. As soon as he turned back going, he said he heard the voice of the Lord say to him, my son, even if you don't want to be rich, it is too late. Ah! I was provoked, 19 years old. I said, God, I will do the same thing. As a 19 year old, all I had was 50,000 naira in my account. Because I'd been working at that time, doing, what do you call it? CWS, have you, what do you call it? Uh, industrial work experience. Or what, call it, what do they call it here? Internship. As a 19 year old boy, I went to UBA, Ibadan, Adube. Now, if you know Ibadan very well, you know where I'm talking about. And then there was no, there was no transfer. I went in, signed the, the, the slip to withdraw the money, cash in my hands. My hands shaking, 50,000, all I had. And took it to that church as a stupid boy. And gave it to them. The guy said, here, we issue receipts. I said, it's not necessary. I don't need it. I dropped it. And then I said, God, you spoke to that man. It's time to speak to me. I stand before you, I lie not. I heard God say to me that you have touched my heart. And even if you don't want to be rich, it is late. Today, if I give God $50,000 in one year today, it's an insult on God. It's an insult. It's an insult. But I was willing to let go of 50,000 naira. I wish there was another way to tell you. But there's no other way. Pastor Ibuku told us yesterday that even God, when he wanted to get the whole world, he gave his son. The only way is giving. Your problem is you do too much calculation. Do too much calculation. Say so the church we eat it. The church we eat it. How much is it? And the church we eat. You're just looking for excuse. Excuse. Some people even take their tithes out. They say I will not give it to church. They go and give it to beggars. They say, after all, I give it to beggars. You, you have not tithed. Though. You can't be the administrator of God's resources. If it is belongs to God and he has said how you must administer it, there's a blessing for giving to the needy. There's a blessing for giving your tithe. You don't take your tithe and go and give it to the beggar. That's not tithe. That's Italian. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that's charity you've done. That's charity. He said, bring all the tithe into my house. So that there will be meat in my house. What I didn't show you earlier today was that 2.5% of every income in this church goes to trust fund. We have a trust fund account. This church pays tight as a church. Because I believe in corporate giving. My businesses give pay tight as a business. 
And I know several of you that your business is pay tight. Because when Abraham, some people say tithing is Old Testament, is the law. Tithing predates the Old Testament. The Old Testament was enacted when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments. But Abraham tithed and gave unto Melchizedek a 10%. My friend, get your thoughts together. A lot of fake theology out there. Let me tell you why Satan propounds no theology is to keep the church poor. Because if the church does not have the finance, how would we do shop for free? How would we do port outreach? How would we win the souls? In fact, if the church could not afford eating system, you would not come to church today. So Satan will mess up people's mind with a lot of theology in order just to keep the church poor. Say, oh, pastor, you don't understand. When I have enough, I will tight. No, you will have enough because you start tightening. You say, oh, but after all, I'm still getting it together. You don't know how much more God could have given you. You think you are blessed? Wait until you start tightening. For a little one among them shall become a thousand. And a small one, a great nation. You are looking for God buying you a house. God says, how about you buying houses for others? You are looking for God to buy you a car. God said, I, I can bless you to own a, fa- a car line. A car line. This year, 2024, part of what you must do to touch the heart of God is to give to him. Is to give. I showed you the budget of this church earlier today. That one million dollars would come from you. God said to me, you know, there's some funny things about some very misdirected fellow that decided to attack me. And it gave me a little bit of concern at some point. And then I was talking to some of my tribe a few weeks ago. And they were just recounting the number of things that God had done for them in the year 2023. And how many people have gotten jobs and how many people are buying houses? And it dawned on me that, hold on. If I've trained 100 people that got a job, average of 100,000 per annum, that is $10 million into the economy that didn't exist before. Meaning if I've trained half 500 people that have gotten jobs, that is at least $50 million in the economy and this is how a ripple effect. In fact, a lady walked up to me and said, there's somebody who has been in hospital and I've been sending money to them. Uh, they, in fact, they took the guy out of hospital because they couldn't afford the bills. They said the guy was left to die, but I kept sending money, I kept sending money and took him to the hospital and then he's fine and he's alive and all of that. He said, so why are you telling us this story? He said, because they kept thanking me and kept sending prayers and I said, for every of this prayer that they prayed, there's a portion of it that belongs to this man. Because God used this man to help me through this journey. And I broke down in tears. Say, God, I'm sorry. That allow one stupid, misdirected fellow to cause me to begin to think. Pastor Ibuku said yesterday, and then God reminded me. He said, I have sent you. Ah, I wrote it down. Not as a user of men, but as a raiser of men. As a raiser of men. But I know the secret, guys. I know the secret. It is in giving. It is in giving. I want you to rise to your feet this morning. It's the first Sunday of the year. I'm not about to raise an offering. 
Because some of you, your mind is already going through offering. Ah, they will raise another offering now, special giving. I'm not about to raise an offering. Two things I'm going to do, I will partake of the communion. Number one, I want you to consecrate yourself to him. I say, Lord, I will serve you this year. This 2024, I will serve. This 2024, I will serve. With my strength, with my mind. I will not let anyone discourage me. I want you to pray that prayer for yourself. Nothing will distract me. Nothing will discourage me. I will serve. God, give me grace. Grace to serve. Grace to serve. Grace to serve. To the fullest of my ability. I want you to pray against every distraction. That nothing will distract me. Nothing will take me away from the place of service. But I will serve with the all of my strength. With the all of my might. With the all of my power. I will serve. I will serve. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed.